Hey guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 3 of our understanding docker for windows video series. And in this video we'll be talking about getting up to the speed with docker. So before watching this part I would request you to watch part 2 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, let's get started. Let's do a quick recap on how we play around with docker. So the following are the most important commands before we start working with our docker for windows. So some of the commands are docker info, so this is the command which we saw in our previous videos of the series, and then docker pull, so this is going to be pulling the images from the hub.docker.com, and then docker images command, so this command is going to be showing you what are the image being downloaded into your docker. And then there is something called docker run, so this command is going to be running the images as a container. And then you can show the process is being running in your docker using docker ps and if you want to get the complete information you can use ps iphone a and then there is something called as docker stop which is going to stop the running container and then docker rm is going to be removing the container and for docker run there are so many important commands that i would like to highlight some of them are docker docker run image so this is something which is going to spin up the image that's it and then there is docker run hyphen hyphen name so this flag is to set the name for your image and you can call this container with this name right and then there is something called as docker run hyphen hyphen rm and image so this is going to be removing the container once the processes has been done and then docker run hyphen d is a detach mode so you can run the detached version of the container and then you can run the docker with the detached and interactive so there is something called as it and then there is something called as hyphen d hyphen p for the port and this 4000 colon 4000 is nothing but the 4000 is for the host exposed port and colon 4000 is the internal containers port so these are something which we have discussed in our previous course as well in the understanding the ABC of Docker video series. So go back and watch those videos for much clearer detail. But right now we're just going to quickly run through all of them in as much fast as possible. So for that I'm going to flip to our Windows 10 machine. Alright so now we have these Docker info message that shows all the information of my machine. And one of the quick important thing that I would like to point before we go further is this. The kernel version is currently shows 4.8.15 Mobi and the operating system is Alpine Linux version 3.4. Remember this is the same operating system that we were discussing in our understanding the ABC of Docker video series which is going to run the very very miniature version of Linux operating system, right? That's exactly it is. If you go to the Hyper-V of this machine over here, you can see there is something called as Mobi Linux VM. Right, so this is the Linux distro being supplied by the Docker while you install the Docker for Windows, right? But right now we are not really going to use this guy. Rather, we are going to make use of the Windows operating system containers. So not this one, right? So there we go. So this is the operating system, and you can see there is something called as a OS type, which is going to show you Linux. Right, and there is an architecture, CPU, and total memory being used, and the name. Right, so these are something very, very important to keep in mind because so, right now, we're not going to make use of the Linux version of the Docker, rather, we're going to make use of the Docker for Windows, the Windows version. So, for enabling this, you have to go here, right click, and there is something called a switch to Windows container. So, if you click this option, this option that you are seeing here, the Docker info, is going to change. So we'll talk about that later once we get into that in our next video. But as of now, this is just a heads up to show you what are the different kinds of options available out of the box, right? So let's clear the screen and let's see what is this. Docker images. So right now you can see there is no images being pulled because it's a fresh Docker being installed in our fresh machine. So nothing is available here. So you can just do Docker PS and it will show all the processes being running so there is no containers currently running so what I can do is I can go to the hub.docker.com and let's search for a very very small distro which is nothing but the Alpine version I guess so let me go there alright so this is the Alpine Linux version and you can see this is the only smallest 
operating system of Linux you can see it's only 5 MB in size so I'm gonna pull this for this demonstration because we don't are really gonna use this version Linux version for this series so I'm just gonna pull this and you can see this docker pull alpine so if I give this it's gonna pull the latest version of the alpine operating system into our machine pretty fast and now if I go to my lock docker images you can see that we have an image right here is only 4.8 MB and it's created two months before and it has it is pulling directly from the latest tag and you can see there are so many tags available like version library 3.3 docker file 3.2 docker file you can specify this tags as well but the latest version is by default so if you can see all the different kinds of tags available over here right so if I want to start this particular Alpine Linux uh, something like a shell command or something like that then I can just do docker run Alpine and if I hit the SH and hit enter it just started and it is stopped right and now if I just go docker ps hyphen a you can see that it started seven seconds ago and it exited six seconds ago so within one second it got exited and the reason is because we have not run this particular docker container as an interactive mode so you can just do docker hyphen d as a detach mode and then hyphen it and then you can oops maybe you can specify docker run and then i can just select the specify the image name so the image name is nothing but our alpine so i'm just going to say alpine and sh hit enter that's it so it's writing right now it's running in a detached mode and also in an interactive mode so i should have given only one by the way but i have just given both of them it's okay but let me see what is the process being running and you can see that this time the command sh is running and it is up for 11 seconds so it is not being closed it is still running though so let me just remove the detach sh there we go we are welcome to our linux version of the shell command and now you can do if i do ls it will show the list of files which is available in the directory and then i can just go to the directory etc and again i can show all the oops show all the files within this particular directory so it's pretty much available over here so which is, which is pretty fast so you just pull the linux version of an operating system from the docker hub and you just started it with just one line of code docker run interactive alpine and the command sh right so if you want to see all the processes it's been running you can see there are two processes being running here the one is the sh and another one is the process the command that i just started the daemon process right so only two commands are process being running in here so this is how you can do very quickly uh with the docker for linux and let's see if i want to run this particular image uh with a name so if i just go over here so docker ps hyphen a oops all right let me come out of this and docker ps hyphen a docker run and hyphen uh, it for interactive and then if you want to give a name you can just give something like this hyphen hyphen name is equal to uh, let's see my Linux and then Alpine is the image name and then oops Alpine and then you can just SH there we go and you can then go to one more PowerShell and here you can just type docker ps hyphen a and you can see that this time we have a name for this particular image my linux right instead of the alpine with uh, some garbled value here the gifted hypothet keen right or angry blackwell we have a name like my linux so you can use this for stopping the particular uh, image and like that so for stopping it you can just do docker stop my linux so this is going to stop the particular container from running so it's taking a while all right it stopped and you can see that it also came out from the particular shell command and now you can just do a 
docker hyphen rm and my linux here we go so it came out of it right now it also removed it so now if i just do a docker ps hyphen a the particular processes is also gone right so this is how you can do a basic operation using the basic commands and once again there are so many other options that we have already discussed in our dockers understanding the dockers video series so please go ahead and watch that particular video series for a clear understanding right so from our next video series we'll jump in and start working with the docker for windows so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day